What is dual sporting? The truth is, there are many definitions to dual sport. Sure, hop on the road and do a quick trail hop. Or is it just that? Is dual sporting really tied in with adventure riding? Or is it meant to just be a capable dirt bike that is just plated? Just enough not to get stopped by the law. Go on, do your single track just two miles down that road. I get it, we all have different opinions, expressions, needs, and wants. So no matter what answer or opinion I might give, it will never be enough. Of course, if they design that unicorn bike that we all want. But to be honest, I think it's not that far away. I mean, essentially, it is a 250 pound bike, able to cruise highway speeds, ABS, long maintenance intervals, EFI, 6 speed, and of course reliable. And not to mention, a very capable off-road bike that can also handle tough single track. And let's be honest, not many of us, you know, we're not Graham Jarvis looking to do a 20 foot ledge jump in a single track. So most single tracks will be within our skill limit. But say this, not many of us are into single track at all. We know it's tough, sketchy, and sometimes can be deadly. So in this case, this is where I draw the line for dual sports. In my opinion, it is a capable on and off road machine that can handle gnarly double trap, but its main purpose is to go explore. In my eyes, a dual sport is technically not single track ready, at least in the hard gnarly stuff. So what is the best dual sport in my opinion of 2019 or 2020? Let it sink in, yep, the KTM 690 or Husky 701. Let's be honest, even though it weighs the same as every dual sport out there, like the DRZ 400, this bike is light on your toes. Gas tank is in, you know, it's in located in the back, which is genius. Not only for popping wheelies, but to do weight the front much easier and, you know, able to go through tough rocky obstacles with no problem. So why the KTM 690 or Husky 701? All too often, I see these bikes touring Colorado, and we all know Colorado has very rugged, tough terrain. It's legitly nothing but rocks, hills, steep descent, sand, and pea gravel on the trails. I see these bikes just handling the trails with no issue, and at speed. But here's where it gets fun. Easy cruising at 70, 75 miles an hour it lets you explore anything. See, it's not about hitting the same trails over and over again, but it's all about hopping on the road and trying to get to that dirt road you spotted in Google Maps. Finding out the unknown and then heading over to that one horse town to pick up a smoothie off this hole in the wall. This is what dual sporting is, and to add on, capable of doing light adventure touring, which is what many people use the 690 and 701 for. Sure, I, I, I get it. I can get the DRZ 400, DR650, or the Beta 350 Double R. But in all honesty, the 690 outperforms all of these bikes, quote unquote, in dual sport terms. I get it, the Beta 350R is a far more capable off-road machine versus the 690 or 701, and can also cruise on the highway at 70 miles per hour. 
But to be honest, we all know the 690 and 701 is much better, much more comfortable, and of course that ABS, all that is just an advantage. See, the Beta 350RR is really meant to do racing or really tough single track, not really meant to do dual sporting around town. It's more of a true t trail hopper. Okay, I guess we're doing more, more enduro riding. <laughs> So like these wheels right here, hits them no problem. It absorbs them, it's nice. So I'll probably say like the power delivery is very similar. Ah, oh, getting dust in my eye. Yeah, it feels nice. Suspensions are plush. Definitely you can tell it's meant for like indoor riding. 690 Enduro, duh. <laughs>